Well, the good thing is that we are live. Oh. <laughs> it has been, but no one is um is on yet. So I like to give it just a second to hang out. I like to check my phone and make sure that okay. <laughs> And make sure that it is on. And we are. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Mills with Manda. It is um, December 1st. December 1st. Oh, my goodness. Holiday season. It's upon us. It is upon us. Um, as you can see tonight, I have a special guest. We're hanging out with Bunny. Um, yeah, if you've been a part of Town Hall, if you've been a part of any of the PRN classes, Shift Happens is Bunny's little Pride and Joy baby bunny <laughs> basket. <laughs> I didn't know where to go with that. Um, but yeah, Bunny is here with us tonight, and we are going to, um, we just had a holiday. I'm not big on holidays, um, but I know that at Food Resource Places, pantries, things of that nature, they're known to give away um, turkey and stuff. Yeah. So even if you're not celebrating a holiday, you probably had a, a big turkey and maybe you don't know what to do with this. So what we're going to do today is uh, make a meal with some holiday leftovers. Yeah, because I, Amanda asked me to be a part of this away a while back, a ways, a ways ago. And I had this ideas of grandeur of what I wanted to cook. And then off of the tail end of Thanksgiving, I thought, I really don't want to cook. I don't cook a lot anyway, because um, my family, my husband and his whole family are come from Louisiana. So they are all cookers and bakers and phenomenal cooks. My husband is a far better cook than me. And so I don't cook. But I know I have this whole pan of leftover turkey. And I thought, you know, I'm just, and it being cold today, I thought I wanted to do something savory. Mm -hmm. And I do things very easy. What is when Rachel Ray first came out? It was those 30 minute meals. Oh, yeah. Right? Yes, I do remember and that. And so mm -hmm. keep it simple uh, and keep it easy. And in 30 minutes, and the fewer amount of ingredients work the best for me. I saw that. So, so we're going to make soup. Soup is good though. Soup is a comfort food, I think, um, for I, me personally. I love soup. Soup, chili, mm -hmm, things like that. And, and this, I mean, the weather's. Yeah, it's cold. It's getting a little chilly. <laughs> it's getting a little chilly. So, you know, in the, the vein of keeping it simple, we're not making homemade soup, but this is one of my favorite soups. It doesn't matter what brand, because all stores have their own brands and stuff like mm -hmm. this. But this is a chicken noodle soup. And what we're going to do, it, it doesn't have any chicken. It's a dry mix, like those good old noodles. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But you can get extra noodles. Um, so ready for what this. we're going to do is make this, but we're going to add in some really cool stuff to kind of make it homemade. It is going to be homemade. Because it's, it's made with love. <laughs> In, in my new home, in Amanda's old stomping grounds up in the Pawpaw Patch in Monroe. But um, my husband, for Thanksgiving, fried two two turkeys. Oh, so it's going to be fried turkey. Fried turkey. You know how we feel about fried stuff in the South. Yeah. Um, before we jump into this, I just want to make sure that I shout out some um, information. Just so you know, we do have a warm line. It is free. It is confidential. And it is 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, the, it's, the information is on your screen. The number is 833-390-7728. Um, shout out to folks who work the warm line over the holidays. Um, I know sometimes it can be hard to, um, to work on the holidays. Um, you know, so shout out to those individuals. And um, we're so glad that folks were able to call that day and have someone to talk to. Um, also, if you have any questions about our class calendar or schedule, or maybe you just want to check in on Miss Kim. We got a front desk, y'all. And just because we're not currently open in a physical manner doesn't mean that we don't have a front desk that's not still up and working. And that's Monday through Friday from 8 to 4.30. And that's 704-390-7709. So I know. Well, good thing is that it's on the screen. So, yeah, I did say it fast. I'm surprised I didn't 
mix it up. A lot of times I'll like get a, a bird, a, a burst of like a bird, <laughs> a burst of dyslexia or something and read numbers backwards. I don't know. It happens though. All right. So there's your pertinent information. Um, don't forget about town hall tomorrow. Uh, we got Jane happening after this with expansions. I know y'all love her. Um, so check her out as well. And let's make this. All right. Fun. So what I do is I just follow the easy directions. This is a kind of a new state for me, so I'm trying to still figure it out. Oh, which I would be better. Maybe that one because it has the small eye on the inside and the big eye on the outside. Oh, you're so outside. smart. That's why I love you. So I just have one similar to this. Well, so I'm, I'm just following the directions on the packet. Eight cups of water. And so what I'm going to do while Bunny is doing that is we're going to, like she said, we're going to add some stuff to it. We're going to make it a little more hearty. We're going to make it a little more savory. I talk about this every single week. Spices, herbs are your friends. Um, <laughs> that will, yes, yeah, herb is the word. That will take away the need for a lot of those sauces that can sometimes be high in sugar, um, can give us sometimes more calories than we really need at that moment in time. And we could just um, utilize our spices and our um, dried or our fresh herbs. So um, today we're going to be adding some onion to this. You could also like what if you had other vegetables at home. Maybe things that were already cooked. Like I'm thinking to myself, Bunny, I have somebody's off camera. That's why you can't see her, but she's back behind me. Oh, it's okay. You were out at the sink. You were at the sink. So I have like meal prep some veggies at home like just a whole thing of them and so like i would throw that in there if i was at home and those are things like some squash zucchini cabbage um things of that nature right, oh, <laughs> right beside of it you got it buddy it takes two it takes two baby <laughs> well you know you talk about that your trash can? uh right here oh good isn't that just it is nifty well and also you're talking about just dumping stuff in um i'm all for again making things easy they have all sorts of these kinds mm -hmm. uh they even have like a vegetable one where like you can dump everything in it you make a stewed beef out of it oh yeah I've you have leftover i mean and it doesn't even have to be beef it has it can be Whatever leftover meat you have, whatever maybe the pantry has given you, maybe the can maybe the pantry didn't have anything. But maybe you have some ground turkey meat. Um, you know that would still be a really good you know option to add in there. So soup is easy. You can do anything with soup. This is one of my favorite. You talk about spices. Oh, the adobo. Oh, I love this. I yeah. put it on everything. Yeah, it's a it's a staple in my home too. That and um, the complete seasoning. Um, those are two of my what staples. Kind of it's just a complete seasoning. It's not the same. Oh, it's my Goya also. Goya. So you know, if, sometimes seasonings and things can be expensive. If you feel like maybe that's the barrier to why you don't use a lot of seasoning or you don't have a lot, Goya is a great option of seasonings. Um, you can find that at a regular at a regular grocery store, but also Aldi um has good stuff and it's it's cheap well um, in any store brand yeah any really store cheap. brand darlene's checking in with us what's up darlene tonight we're going to be cooking um some soup we're going to be using our holiday leftovers to make some delicious soup because it is cold and we're trying to like warm it up girl we're trying to warm it up i'm glad you're here tonight by the way darlene I know she's such a like faithful like class participant and viewer and I just appreciate that and really you know thank you for taking time out of your day darling um because sometimes our days can be hectic and it can feel overwhelming to you know to think I've got to do a b c x y and z and darling always fits us in there um, so thank you for showing up, Darlene, and showing out. Um, this isn't the first time you've been told it, and I hope it's not the last, but you are appreciated. Um, if you're checking in with us, y'all, just leave us a comment. Hang out with us. Let us know 
uh, which you would do with your holiday leftovers. Um, so for my holidays, you saw my sister on last week. And um, I really, 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 I'm not a huge turkey fan, y'all. I have reasons behind not liking turkey. Um, I'm about to eat this up, though, because it's in a soup. And that sounds delicious to me. But I begged my sister, you know, to let's do something different for the holidays. So it was just going to be her and I and um, my brother-in-law and nephews. And I really wanted to do, like, some leftover. Um, oh, you don't have any leftovers left, Arlene? Okay. Um, I really wanted to do, like, some turkey sandwiches with, like, cream potato. I don't want to finish our soup. It's what we do. It's what we do at home, right? Um with like some cream potatoes or some dressing um, on my sandwich with some cranberry sauce. And my sister wasn't feeling that. So we didn't get that. But we did get some roast beef and that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, well, I, uh, my husband and I were first married. We hadn't really established whose who's in-laws we would go to. So my parents always lived out of town, still in North Carolina, not far away. And we would go do Thanksgiving with them and then travel back to Charlotte, do Thanksgiving with my husband's family. Well, um, and so I have two older siblings and they, they were in the same boat. So what my parents started doing is cooking something different than turkey. Mm. And I loved it. Yeah, I like that too. So like on my mom's side of the family, um, they have like, she would have a turkey and a ham and you know the traditional stuff but then she would have um chicken and dumplings oh. and they would be made from scratch the dumplings would even be made from scratch oh. um i'm not a huge chicken dumpling fan but my family loves them oh. hey Kara, i'm glad you're here tonight i saw you've been calling me please don't think i'm trying to ignore you um i just been working today girlfriend uh for those of y'all who don't know Kara is one of my best friends um in the real world. Oh, here it goes. It's doing more. Yeah, is it on high? We're good. We're going high. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, you're good. Okay, this is a. I haven't been in this house very long. It's probably here. It's okay. <laughs> no, I don't know. Well, obviously, I haven't been in this, this spot very long either. I don't know. Um, I'm just trying. I'm just here for a good time, y'all. Well, what I'm doing for people who are just joining us, um, we're um, I'm cutting up leftover turkey. Um, my husband fried these for Thanksgiving, and we still have a whole lot left. Uh, we had both my kids and um, and my grandkids over Thanksgiving, and I told them before they came over that you bring plenty of Tupperware because all of this is not staying in my house. So did they follow, did they abide by that? Oh, yeah, because my husband makes this macaroni and cheese and it's, it's a recipe, I'm going off camera. I forget what it is, it's sweet, sweet jeans or, or somebody it's a recipe he's had forever of macaroni and cheese, and it is the ooeyest, gooeyest macaroni and cheese you have ever had, and it's so rich and decadent. It's a we might have to get Dennis up on this show one day, y'all. Yeah. Well, and um, so I don't want, and so we, we did all the traditional stuff, right. because when we go to my sister's, you know, nobody had leftovers or anything like that, so we did all, we did the stuff, and I made, uh, uh, real not box mashed potatoes, real true blue. Funny, I love you. Just leave it alone. <laughs> Watch your pot. <laughs> um, but and, and we get it all. And I thought those are. I'm a car addict, and I know that I couldn't have kept that in my house. I so I was. I told him. I said, "Do not enter my house without any Tupperware, because this shit's not staying in my in my house." Hey, Eric, we're glad you're here tonight. Um, Eric, Eric. Says, Eric says, first of all, we're awesome. Appreciate that. You're awesome as well. Um, 
and we're glad to see you this evening. Um, Eric was on Recovery 101 yesterday, so if you missed that, go back and check it out. If you feel like it, if you want to, if you need some Recovery 101 in your life. Uh, recovery 101 is just a class to kind of help you with those bases of recovery, those beginning steps, those ideas, those thoughts, those contemplations, on those early coping skills. It's a great resource. Well, I think um, sometimes no matter where you are in your recovery. It's helpful to be reminded, right? Like, there's some, you know, I need to remind, remind myself that I do have all these skills or... Just to be reminded and somebody yeah. may come up with something new and it's just refreshing to, to kind of hear that. Yes, and I agree with that. all alone. She acts like we're about to go feed everybody else. So right now we're just waiting on this pot to boil. Which is what Bunny's been watching. And who knows the saying about a watched pot? Well, we know it doesn't boil. <clears throat> but it's going to happen. We're going to talk. Those are the earrings I gave you. They are those earrings you gave me. Oh. Yes, you've changed my life, my hoop game. My hoop game is up. Okay, y'all. So one holiday down, right? One holiday left to go. It's almost over. Um, the holiday season is almost over. Um, and I know, but we've only got, what, like 12 days or something? Um, <laughs> that's what it feels like. It happens so fast. <laughs> but we recognize that holidays are not always pleasant or enjoyable for everyone. So um, that that is it's almost over. We were talking today, I think, yeah, and staffing this morning about Kristen Brown's tree. Um, and, um, several people at PRN's favorite time of the year is Christmas. Bunny being one of those, um, I'm really surprised she turned her little Christmas tunes off. We could have left those going when that would have been fun, but maybe next time. Um, but, you know, and then we talked about that even if you have, like, bad memories or trauma with the holiday itself, you know, there's joy to be found in, in just seeing the lights and, you know, the shininess of the ornament or, you know, just the little, to practice those mindful skills that we talk about sometimes, um, to just stop and notice how things, you know, sound in our ear, how they, how they twinkle to our eye um, can be a really, that's my fault. Um, <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> <laughs> can be a really therapeutic thing to have um, your your mind wrapped around in a time that maybe th you know is not your best time. Well, and it adds a, a little bit of different warmth, I think, when you just can change the dynamics of what your house looks like, whether it be a little Christmas tree or more candles or whatever that looks like to you. Or maybe you don't like it at all, and that's okay. Um, because it does kind of conjure up different emotions and different feelings and, and the losses and the and we're not the way it was last year and and uh, people have experienced so much since March and so yeah. it sometimes it's hard to find the gratefulness and the beauty of the season but there is um it's just kind of redirecting what that looks like for you absolutely but um, I respect, I, re I totally respect because as long as I've been at PRE and there's people that this time of year is not, they don't fare well just because it's different anniversaries and it's different time frames. Different and memories, and, yeah. yeah. Reminder of, of, of losses or, or people that were significant and not a part of your life anymore. Mm -hmm. And I recognize that too. Yeah. And then I started thinking, well, I'm just going to tone it down. And I, and I thought to myself, well, that's, that's me and that's what makes me happy with the respect that I know it doesn't make everybody happy. And then I get that. It's human resources, everybody. <laughs> and Eric, we want to let you know that um, you're inspiring as well. Eric is one of our warm line um, employees. So. Look, it's boiling. Yes, it's happening. Do you want me to go ahead and jump these onions in? So they can be yeah, yeah, yeah. Sauteing it up or boiling it up. What's <laughs> Eric, this is water. This is water in the pot. He asked what's in the pot. Um. Erin is one of our warm line 
voice. So these are the voices that you get to hear on the other end of that phone call. And I'm going to part of the area for quite some time. for quite okay. some time. I'm going to throw that back up there so that people make sure that they can um, get that number. I'm going to send this in your seat. You just do that. And the nice. Again, this is just the, the powder too. To me, it's the base. It's, it's uh, pretty fast and easy. I mean, it'd be easy to do, boil on some chicken breast and season it up. Absolutely. Or if that's not something that you have, um, you can do canned chicken. Yeah. Um, you can always do canned chicken and put in here. Yeah, this is very easy. It's, let's look at, so we got going on here. Don't read all of the. No, it's not too bad. It's not too bad at all. It's like you don't read it. If you don't read it, it's not, yeah, it's not there. that many gallons. And this makes um, quite a few servings, y'all. Um, it makes, it says eight. I guess it depends on um, what you consider a serving. I might, it might get four for me. Um, I think I'll have to have more turkey. Do you need some help cutting some? And Darlene wants to know the ingredients list. So Darlene, the ingredients list is super, super simple. It's whatever meat you got left over. Or, and this really, it is, it doesn't even, you don't have to put any meat in it. It's just like a, like a canned chicken soup, really. Right. So it would be, you know, whatever your meat is, if you want a meat in there. Um, and then, Girl, I, don't know, I know you know how to cook, so throw, just whip up with some vegetables um, that you have in your refrigerator. You got some leftover soda in there. Um, I just talked about earlier how I have some vegetables right now in my refrigerator that I cooked about a week ago. Some frozen vegetables in my freezer. You know, um, this would be one of those things that I would use as like a clean out meal, like clean out my refrigerator and throw some of those things in here. Um, Eric says that cream of chicken soup is a good thickener. If you like a thicker soup versus yeah. um, a soupier soup, then yeah, cream of chicken soup is a good thickener. Thanks for that, Eric. I appreciate that. Maybe you don't have that, y'all. Um, throw you a little bit of flour in there. Get it good and boiling. Throw you some flour in there. Uh, make sure you keep on mixing while you throw that flour in there. And um, that'll help thicken it up, too. Just be mindful that uh, if you throw too much in there, you're going to have some. Yeah, it's going to be real thick. Uh, that's the one thing that um, we seem to do around here. We, me, and I watch my husband. But he does miracle stuff with leftovers. I, matter of fact, last night we had um, had some pork, and he took some pork, leftover pork, cubed it up, some kielbasa, mixed it all up with some stuff, had some, um, and some marinara sauce. He just had put just in the refrigerator and doing what you were just talking about. Mm -hmm. And it was just throwing everything in there. Yep. And um, put it in like these little cute little chafing dishes, melted some cheese on top. Y'all, this is fancy. So if you ever came to Thanksgiving at PRN when we were in a position to do that and able to meet in person, you have probably, whether you know it or not, encountered Dennis. Um, Dennis tends to come and hang out with us and serve food with us. I don't know if that's a labor of love or if that's because Bunny makes him. Um, but we appreciate that nonetheless. Um, and now we know he's like a stellar cook. So I'll go buy the groceries. And he cooks it up. And he cooks it and I clean. Okay, that's simple, a pretty good. Simple. simple. And when he says, what do you want for silver? I'm like, I don't know. What do you want? Meaning, like, undertow. Right. Well, I mean, that's, you know. But, I mean, I will say that I come from a, a oh, crap. Turkey down. I come from a, a, how my mom cooked was, you know, a meat and two vegetables. And yeah. so, I mean, there wasn't a whole lot to it. Right. And it sounds so, like maybe not a lot of creativity. It was very basic. And so, it, but when my kids were young, I did cook. I, I, I cooked a lot until finally that um, things became 
seems like, oh, it's Wednesday. We must be having hamburger helper. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of how it was in my family. My mom always cooked. Grow no, my dad is a fantastic cook. My mom always cooked growing up. But then when um, we got a little bit older, I was in high school. My mom was, you know, back working a full time job. She wasn't. She had been a stay at home mom before that and had cleaned houses while Emily and I were in school. But when she went back to work, it was kind of, you know, that situation where it was kind of a fend for yourself or we knew that Wednesday night was going to be chicken patty and french fries, um, you know, or whatever. So, um, yeah, I mean. That's one of the reasons why I can't stand meatloaf. Because mom. Felt like we have it two or three times a week. And my mom go, no, we get And I said, well, to me, it felt like, like it. I felt like that about green beans. And we probably did because as we all know, green beans are, you know, something that is easy to get on food stamps. Um, if you don't have food stamps, they're very cheap. You get a can at the store at Walmart for 38 cents. Um, we ate green beans with everything. And so I felt like I was, I was done with green beans. Today I can eat them. But for the longest, I couldn't do it. I can't do I can't do um, meatloaf because of that, and uh, can't stand chicken pot pie. I'm not a chicken pot pie fan either. I had um, a friend last night. I was at the grocery store. I said, I don't know what I want to have for dinner, and he said, Well, get you some chicken pot pie, some of them little frozen ones. And I said, You can't do what? I'm not a chicken pot pie fan. Like I really have to be. In a place where that's all that's left on the table for me, um, for me to do that. Yeah. Do you ever not eat something because you got sick over it? Yes, and I actually, you know, don't drink things for that same reason. Like and that still kind of gives you, you smell something and you go, Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it takes you back. <laughs> all the it way takes back. You back. <laughs> I that's funny how things like, that can trigger our memories. Well, uh, <laughs> we do recycle out here in Monroe. Well, I don't. I mean, I'm a bad You're mother bad. parent. <laughs> I don't. Um, I don't recycle. So, but I remember. I mean, I was little bitty. We lived in Greensboro, and we had this creek behind our house. And my brother and sister were a little bit older than me, and and um, so I had to fend for myself a lot of times. So I had a little tea set. So I went out back, I had a little tea party with creek water. <laughs> <laughs> and so it did not do very well with a little five-year-old stomach. And I got really sick, and I and we had had chicken pot pie before I'd gotten sick, and I Oh yeah, makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. It was the same creek my dad was cutting the grass. One time I was riding outside in my little tricycle, and next thing he knew, I was laying looking up at the creek water. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Maybe that's what was the matter with me. <laughs> um, I don't know if that explains it all or not, Bunny. <laughs> Hey Emily, um, that's my sister, y'all. Just in case you didn't hey, know. Hey Emily, it's the smell. I wish you could smell this. It, it smells, smells so good. good. I mean, it smells like homemade soup. Um, let's see if yeah, I can bring you a little bit closer. Can you see? I don't know if you can see that or not in there. Look at that. I mean, it looks like it looks good, right? I mean, that's a bag, that's some leftovers. Like, I mean, I think that we, I don't think I have any because we did, we cleared out the refrigerator yesterday with my husband cooking, and I don't have a whole lot left. No, I think that's perfect. Actually, I don't even know if we have anything left. Thanksgiving, did we? Yeah, we did. I don't know, y'all didn't invite me, so I can't, re I can't recall. We had my ranch cheese, we had potatoes, we had stuffing. A plate full of carbs. It's my kind of life. It's my kind of life. So, I cannot believe that it is the first day of December. 
it is, um, I don't know, but I, I was messing with you saying, you know, it's almost over. And I'm just thinking how fast I felt like Thanksgiving came. Right? It did. It's really the whole year has been a conglomerate of fast moving um, time, a lot of sudden things happening. Yeah, like all of a sudden some chaos, chaos started, right? And yeah. Now, well, surely next couple of months we'll be back. And then July came, and they are like, <laughs> surely next couple of months. Mm -hmm. and, so, I mean, for me, I think time went by fast. There were some segments of it that went by really slow. And, but to when you sit and think that today is December 1st. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I was. It's going to be over before we know. It's yeah. going to be 2021. We're going to be moving into a new year. Um you know, and there's a lot of fear around that. I feel like for a lot of people, a lot of uncertainty about what the future is going to be, what 2021 is going to be. Is it going to be as difficult as 2020? Is it going to be easier to cope now that we know, you know, what's, you know, what's up, what's going on, how things have been? Um, I think we, I think we take it back. I think we. In 2021, we gotta take it back. We gotta take the power back. We gotta take the power back. I mean, life will never be like it was before. Mm -hmm. And there's some there's some positives about that too. My hair was up. There's some positives about that too. But I don't want to go into 2021 with 2020 dominating over our heads. Yeah. I think it's time for us to recognize that it's not gonna. Even if it goes back, it's going to take a while for us to to rebuild. Yeah, um, for sure. Rome wasn't, you know, built in a day. Uh, Darlene says she's ready for twenty twenty to be gone and for um, better and new beginnings. So and her. that's and I, that's my whole perspective too, Darlene. It's I'm ready for it to be gone. This mm -hmm. is the first time in my life I think I have recognized that I I just want it. I, even this season, my favorite season of the whole world in the whole world. <laughs> And I, I just am ready. Yeah, I just am ready. And because I'm ready to start 2021, I'm you know think of the different resolutions that you may have made for yourself last year versus what you're going to make for yourself this year. Right. I think 2020 has been a a year of you know at PRN we talk about um, resilience a lot. Here's something that's really cool that we don't talk about a whole lot is that. Resilience can be cultivated, right? Resilience can be can be made. Resilience can be grown. Um, it always has to. And it's, yeah, I mean, I don't. I'm I don't know what we call one eight hundred resilience. That's like a large. <laughs> yeah, somebody's gonna venti resilience, please, with extra sweet cream. Um, but yeah, I think that twenty twenty has been a year of of resilience growth. And, um, you know, it, it just comes, it, we get to bust up into 2021, um, yeah, more prepared to deal with it than we were in January of 2020, right? We're, we are more prepared. <laughs> well, it feels like we are. Um, yeah, I mean, like when we, you know, we yeah. in the new year. Yeah. And we thought, oh, this is going to be a great year. Yeah. And, and it has been, and it's also not been. So there's been some, some positives and negatives for sure. So I don't want to take away from people, places, organizations, whatever, that have had positive years because um, it has been, there have been positives that, that come from this growth, but they've all stemmed from this situation, right? The, the COVID situation and things of that nature. So, I mean, it, that is a fact that my life has shown me that hard times do produce a fruit that a hard that, that not going through a situation just cannot produce in me. I got to learn. I got to learn in, in some way, shape, or form or fashion. Darlene says whatever it is, she's over it. Uh, Darlene, I just love you. Well, I mean, and, and I don't think we were ever promised passive of uh, 
linear. Like our lives do not go from A to B. Right. A to Z. Our lives, you know, you, you come up and you go down. It's just peaks and valleys. But for me, when I crest a valley and I'm back up here, I have to, I always think to myself, I, there's a lesson here. Mm -hmm. There's got to be a lesson. I, I don't think that I can um, not, I think things keep happening for me if I don't step back and reflect, why does this keep happening? Yeah. Or not just happening to me. There's There's got to be something that I am not learning and I have to keep retaking the test and I don't like to take tests. Well, you know, I think that that's so much like my, my recovery though and the recovery of so many other people on um, whether that's from substance use challenges or whether that's from um, mental health challenges um, that people could force me all they wanted to, right, to, to start this journey of wellness and recovery. And I could start it for them, right? I could, I could jump on board. I could be substance free. I could be taking my medications, and I could be doing this all for them. But and until we find that yeah, until I like, until I'm ready to do it for Amanda. Until I was ready to do it for Amanda. Until the people that I, I see in my work and my personal life, until they're ready to do it for them, there's still bumps in the road that. They're, they're hard to overpass without coping skills, and they haven't developed those yet. I haven't developed the blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I had not developed those yet, and I had to keep hitting that rock bottom, and it was a different rock bottom every time. It was never the same, but when I hit just the right rock bottom, and I thought, I'm tired of learning this shit, my whole life changed, and I was able to then genuinely be on a journey of wellness and recovery maybe not so much wellness at that point in time because I wasn't really sure what wellness looked like and it honestly all it took PRN for me to learn that um it took working at PRN I did not get the the pleasure of starting out as a person who came in looking for support um I just was was blessed by by my higher power and um, PRN taught me a lot about what wellness really was so my wellness journey didn't really begin until four years ago was the reality for that um, but even then I had experienced so many rock bottoms yeah. but that's what it took for me to understand what I wanted and how important it was for me to get there and I think that we still hit those those bottoms but I think as we have grown in our wellness and um, we learn to, it's that resilience to yeah. to bounce. I hate the word bounce back, but well, um, I mean, that's we what, use what we've, that has gotten through it, what we've used to get us through it before. Absolutely. And if those aren't positive skills, right, we keep using, I, I've kept using negative skills. Some of those skills, you know, got me involved in some systems. Um, some of those skills have, have kept me homeless at times before. Some of those skills have had it kept a barrier in relationships in my life, um, but they were what I knew. And I, we just use what we know, right? We, we use what, what we've learned, wherever we've learned it from. Hey, Kristen. I had to check in with her real quick. Kristen's here tonight. Uh, she said, you ladies are amazing. I love being along for both of your journeys. Hey, B, thank you. I want to shout out Kristen. Is it Kristen, our Kristen. Yes, it's Kristen Brown. Kristen, my new kitchen. New kitchen, Kristen. Let me out of the way. New kitchen. Here, we'll do a little swivel. New kitchen, Kristen. There we go. It's so new that I didn't know how to walk my stove. <laughs> 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 Kristen, thank you. We enjoy being on yours too, and we're um I'm grateful that you have been on a, a, a lot of parts of my journey. Um, so thank you. And she says she loves the kitchen, Bunny. Um, Kristen's our HR. Wow, Bunny's our HR. <laughs> Kristen's our QA QI. Um, so she's the person who makes sure this thing like is doing what it's supposed to do. Um, if you got any questions, comments, concerns, any suggestions? You can pass those along to Kristen. 
Um, we also have a survey on the PRN Facebook page. You can take that. Your, your feedback is valuable to us. It's okay. Your kitchen girl. Uh, without you and your feedback, there isn't an us, right? Um, because we do this for for y'all. Um, because we love you. Let's see. Look Who's checking that. in? D nice. Denise says was for dinner, ladies. Denise, we did um some soup using leftovers from Thanksgiving. Denise, who are Denise? Yes. What? Yes, they're all checking in tonight. Uh, Roberta's here. She says she's hungry. Well, um, I wish you were here because they don't the I know. She said she's hungry, bunny. She calls you out specifically. Thank y'all for checking in and leaving comments with us tonight. It's always such a pleasure to be able to interact um, with people here. It makes me kind of feel less alone. Um, bunny and I have had a good time. So, we always have a good time. Yeah. I know some people were kind of concerned about what was going on. Look how pretty. And look at the bowl. That is cute. It looks like some handmade something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to read it too. <laughs> I'm just gonna take a sip of this now. <laughs> I do have spoons. I know where my spoons are. Oh my goodness. This has been a wonderful opportunity. I always love being around Amanda. We bounce off of each other just beautifully. And so when this was uh, an opportunity that she had sent out an email like a couple of months ago, needing, wanting to see about going to people's house to travel in Amanda show. I'm, said, trying, I'm trying to get mileage. <laughs> me, me, me. I want you to come out because I enjoy uh, Amanda so much. And I love her philosophy, and we just um, we have the best time. We do, we do. Um, yeah, I'm I'm grateful that Bunny jumped on this. I'm glad everyone else that has jumped on this with me has jumped on it. Um, Kristen called this Thanksgiving soup, and she says she loves it. I guess she's made it in her home before too. So. Probably not like that. I know, and Kristen, hers is probably made from scratch. <laughs> this was not. Let's see, um, Darlene. Says when will there be the next rap class? I don't really, I don't know when we'll be having rap back right now. I'm not really sure how that's going to look. Um, but maybe if we find some outside resources, we'll be able to hook you up with that. Um, Roberta just said that no one showed up for her rap class, so I'm just seeing keywords. I'm just saying, Roberta, darling, y'all might want to start a little like Facebook message between one another. Seems like y'all might have some resources that other people could use. I'm just saying, y'all, ladies. Um, okay. All right, Bunny, you got any last words for us before we sign out and sign over? I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> got any party words for us? No, I am just so thankful to be part of this and so thankful that you're out here with me and I got to get rid of some of my turkey. But I'm, I'm thankful for everybody that's joining us and, and listening to us. It's, it's really cool when you're doing something side by side in the dialogue that you have. Some of the best conversations I have with people is, is driving or when there's not a lot of face-to-face -face, um, connection because I think sometimes people are uncomfortable eye to eye. And to do something... Um, creative like this mm -hmm. and to have the conversations and the, we shared memories, we shared all sorts of stuff in this short span of time and um, I love it and I'm grateful for everybody to be part of us and um, recognizing that it's a season of hope mm -hmm. no matter what or who or how um, it's, it is what you want it to be and the cool thing about PRN is that we are always, we are just a phone call away. Yep. 24-7. And even though we're not physically in um, with you, this is oh, the next best thing, I think. I think it's a pretty good option. Y'all, I hope you have a great rest of your week. Expansions happens in 15 minutes. Check out Jane. Uh, town hall tomorrow check in with us let us know how you're doing come and hear what's what the good news is if we've got some good news i don't know i might be leading along <laughs> um but yeah i look forward to seeing everybody soon 
whenever soon is. Um, until then, I'll be here virtually with you. Um, if no one's told you today they love you, I love you. You matter. And um, you are worth all things good. We'll see you next week. I love you too. Bunny loves you too. Bye, y'all.